praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you to Faith and Grace Church. Welcome to another moment in God's presence, another time of fellowship. Welcome. Please invite your friends, invite your family members. Let them join us. Let them join us as we bless the Lord, as we praise the Lord. Let's, let's, let's worship God this morning in the dignity of His holiness. Hallelujah. Let's, let's, let's give God the glory. Please invite somebody. Let them begin to worship God. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Thank you, Father, Lord Almighty, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for another day in your presence. Thank you, Father, Lord, for bringing us here to receive from you. Because you are a blesser. You always bless your children. Thank you, Father, Lord Almighty, for the beautiful things you have in store for every family, for every home today. Father, we say, take the glory, take the honor, take adoration in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we ask that today's service will be different, Lord. Lord Almighty, your spirit, O oh Lord Almighty, will fill this place. And your Holy Spirit of God will continue to direct us. Holy Spirit, take charge of today's service, Lord. Amen. Father, Lord, we pray, O oh Lord, for the release of your mighty presence, your mighty power amongst us in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, let the angels be on assignment, Lord. Let there be healing today. Amen. Let there be great deliverance, Lord. Let there be salvation today. Amen. Father, we pray, O Lord, that none will leave this place the same. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let our praise and our adoration rise to you as we smell in Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord this morning. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you believe that our Redeemer needs. He's
want to worship him. Lord, we are just here to worship our Redeemer. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's just worship him this morning. Let's exalt him. Our Redeemer is alive. The empty grave is the evidence. Thank you, Jesus, for paying the price. Lord, we worship you. Let's just lift up our hands and worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Ancient of Days. The light of the world, you set darkness to darkness. Open my eyes and let me see. Yes, Lord. Beauty that takes this time. So <laughs> 
We have come to worship you because you are a lovely father, a worthy father, wonderful father you are. Thank you, Lord, for paying the price on the cross of Calvary. Thank you, Father, for we do not have to pay any price. Daddy, we walk into your finished work this morning. And Lord, we've come to receive the blessings from you. Thank you because your blessing keeps flowing. Because your mercy is endures forever. Lord, we ask. In today's service, no one will go home with an empty hand. Amen. Lord, you will shower your blessings upon your people. Amen. You will shower your blessing upon every family. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Have your way today. Yes, Take all the glory. Amen. Take the stage today. Amen. Lord Almighty, because we are your vessel. Amen. Fill us with your spirit Amen. and with your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes, as we remain standing, let's take our prayer of protection. Thank you, Jesus. Because we dwell in the, the secret place, place of, of the Most, most High, High, we shall abide, abide under the, the shadow of, of the Almighty. Almighty. We will say of the Lord, He is our refuge and our fortress. Our God in Him we will trust. Surely He shall deliver us from the snare of the fire and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover us with His feathers, and under His wings we shall take refuge. His truth shall be our shield and buckler. We shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. Nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at no day. A thousand may fall at our side, and ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come near us. Only with our eyes shall we look and see the reward of the wicked. Because we have made the Lord as a refuge, even the Most High our dwelling place. No evil shall befall us. Nor shall any plague come near our dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. In their hands they shall bear us up, lest we dash our foot against the stone. We shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent we shall trample under foot. Because we have set his love upon us, therefore he will deliver us. He will set us on high because we have known his name. We shall call upon him and he will answer us. He will be with us in trouble and honor. He will deliver us and honor us. With long life, he will satisfy us and show us his salvation. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our Lord and our God, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, for bringing us to this beautiful day. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your care. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Father, for all you did for us last week. Thank you, and thank you for this beautiful week, too. Thank you, May your name be exalted in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for today's service. Thank because you, it has pleased you to make us gather again. Thank you, Father, I set our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of glory, Lord of Lords, we pray and ask that you take control of today's service in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that our, our prayers be answered in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that we won't go back the same way we came in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that everything we shall do today will be to your glory. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answering prayers. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our theme today is My Faith Looks Up to Thee.
Good morning and welcome to Faith in Grace Church. I am Courtney Olaye and these are the announcements. Our weekly and monthly services remain Sunday worship, 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Tuesday, online counseling, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Thursday, Bible study and the Holy Communion service from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Every first Friday of the month, there will be midnight watch service at 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. And every first Sunday of the month, there will be anointing service at 9 a.m. to 10.45 a.m. Online counseling will be held on Tuesdays between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. Please call the pastor on the telephone number 832-724-0047 to make an appointment. If your birthday or wedding anniversary falls between Monday and today, our pastor and the entire church rejoice with you and pray that you will experience great joy and satisfaction all through your new year and beyond in Jesus' name. Also, we would love to celebrate with you on any other special occasion during the week. Please send your information to Faith and Grace Church at tagme.org. To support the ministry, through your tithe and offering, please visit our website, which is tagme.org, and click Give. If you would like to give through text, simply text the amount you wish to donate to 833-994-2360 and press send. Click the registration link and enter your payment information. After registration is complete, you'll receive a verification text as well as a receipt via email. For future giving, simply text the amount you wish to give and it will process automatically. For more information on other events and activities, please visit tagme.org or on Facebook at facebook.com slash tagme2019. Continue to stay safe and protected as you go about your activities this week. No plague will come near your dwelling in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. No less week. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tell the person beside you, it's my saying this morning. I say you this morning. Tell him you won't go back the same way you came. You won't go back the same way you came. Tell him God will meet you at your need in the name of God Jesus. God will meet you at the point of your need in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Our promise for this week is found in the book of um, First John. Chapter 5, verse 4. Please let's stand as we take it together. First John chapter 5, verse 4. Says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Amen. Please be seated. The New Living Translation says, For every child of God defeats this evil world. And we achieve this victory through our faith. Amen. How does it mean to achieve victory through faith? A good example is Joshua and Caleb. When they were asked to go and spy the land, God said they had a different spirit. God said they followed him wholeheartedly. They didn't see what the others were seeing. They didn't confess what the others confessed. They had faith in God. And because of that, they were the only two people that made the promised land. Every other person perished. They were not able to meet or to get to the promised land. So this promise is taking us again to our having faith in God. Jesus said in the book of John that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. If we believe as children of God, we shall see the, the glory of God. At times, God will ask us to do some unimaginable things. We just need to believe and obey Him. There are so many examples of great faith men and women in the Bible. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, and hearing what? Hearing the Word of God. We are going to cite examples of great people with great faith in the Bible, few of them. So that each time we remember them and we remember the kind of faith they had in God, it will trigger us and help and strengthen our faith too. Amen. Yeah. We want to look at Queen Esther. 
You know when Mordecai went to her and said, you are sitting and pretending as if you don't know what is happening. You don't know if you are praying today just for a time like this so that you can rescue us. You know that what touched her, it provoked her. And she was like, I have a God. And she decided to do something any other person had never tried. It wasn't, it wasn't easy to just go to the king and ask for something. Despite the fact that she was the queen, she could not even approach the king easily. But she went to God because she had faith in God. She went to God, she prayed to God, to the king of kings, before visiting the king. And she found favor in the sight of God. Amen. What about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? When they were thrown into the furnace, you know, they refused to bow to the king, to the golden, to the golden statue of the king. And the king commanded that they throw them into the fairy furnace. They had faith in God. They had faith in God and God stood with them. And by the time the king checked them, he saw that they were not just three people. A divine person, fourth person was with them because of the faith they had in God. It's not easy to talk about this faith thing, but when we look at the Bible, when we read the Bible, when we study the word of God and look at what the Bible said, Jesus said, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. We can see that these people saw the glory of God. What about Joshua? The walls of Jericho, you know? God said, command the people to march round the walls of Jericho. March round it seven days. You know, it sounds stupid. March round it, then at the end of the day, we blow trumpets. You know, he would like, <laughs> what has that got to do with the wall falling? But at the end of the day, the wall, the wall did not even fall. It sank. It's like zoom, like that. You know, what about Abraham and Isaac? If had that's another funny thing. Abraham so much believed God that even when the son was asking him, Father, where is the ram for sacrifice? He said, God will provide. Despite the fact that God had told him it was Isaac he was going to sacrifice, he didn't tell his son that you are the one for the sacrifice for, 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 for the sacrifice. So he said, God will provide. Because Abraham knew the God he was serving. He knew that even if he had to slaughter that son, God is able to raise him up. He knew that God could even provide the ram, and God provided the ram. I want to encourage us this morning to look. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Let's pray more and study more of the word of God. It will strengthen our faith. Because the Bible says we can't get, our pastor told us last week, that we can't receive anything from God if we don't have faith. We need to have faith. Especially in this time, that in this age that we are in, we need to trust God. God said, Caleb and Joshua followed him wholeheartedly. Even when you are seeing the negative part of what you are trusting God for, just keep trusting God. He will do it at his time. And even if he doesn't do it, he's still the same God. That was what Daniel told the king, that even if my God doesn't save me, my God is still my God. It's that kind of faith God is asking from us. This thing we have on the wall says, faith is not knowing what the future holds, but knowing who holds the future. So who is holding the future of your life? As children of God, it is God that is holding our future. So we need to know who is holding the future, not what the future holds. And as we continue to study the world, the Almighty God will grant us understanding in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Can we just rise up and say hello to someone next to us and just welcome each other to Hello, 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 h
thank him for bringing us here safely. Let's thank him for seeing us through the week. Let's thank him for his protection and his provision, everything we needed, he provided for us. Let's thank you for sustaining our lives. Let's begin to open your mouth and thank you in your own words. Showing how grateful you are for seeing you through the week. Every member of your family, no one is missing, no one is dead. No one is on the hospital bed. Everyone is safe. Let's thank you for surrounding us with his angels, even as we went in and out through the week. We do not like any food to eat, nothing. Thank you for your jobs. Thank you for your homes. You have, you have a place to rest your head at night. You're able to move around. He provides everything we need. He's a good shepherd. Let's thank him for being so gracious and so good to us. Let's thank you for the church. Let's thank you for members. We are the church, not the, not the building. Let's thank you for the privilege to gather as a body and just to encourage each other and to continue to grow. Let's thank you for every member far and near. Let's thank you for the people that join the line. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord, for journeys. Thank you, Lord, for journey mercy. Thank you, Father, Lord, Almighty, for not allowing us to share any evils and the calamities of their lives. Thank you, Father, Lord, for not allowing the power of darkness to have to be. There's so much going on out there now. Thank you, Lord. The pandemic and everything. Just thank you for shielding us, for covering us. Let's thank you for his promises to us, our uh, yes and amen. They work for us. Let's thank you for the kids, even as they started school. Let's thank you for his protection over them. In Jesus' name we pray. This morning we want to pray specifically for our faith, just like the promise we read. It said uh, the, our victory is the faith. And when when I was told what we'll be praying on this week, I didn't really read the message well i actually actually thought we we're praying to be led by the spirit but you said <laughs> ask the Holy spirit to lead me so i've been asking what and even just this picture on the wall i was reading it when i came in it says faith is not knowing what the future holds but knowing who holds the future even as mom said when all those examples we see in the bible if we look at um the story of of uh abraham like the key to having a successful faith is not looking at the situation we are in, but is looking on to God. If Abraham had thought about the logistics of the situation, I'm going to sacrifice my only son that I waited for 100 years before I had him. And God says, go, just go. I'll show you where you sacrifice him. Anytime we think of the situation, I think most times we, we tend to focus, we put our faith in the simplicity of the situation. So let's say we're in a hard time, we're like, okay, what is the possibility of us coming out of this? But God is telling us to put our faith in Him. I think if we can get to that point where we, we trust in God completely, like, okay, I don't know what this situation is about, but this is God we're talking about. He always comes through. He always comes through. He is God. He cannot fail. And that's the kind of faith that the people in the Bible days had. Like the queen that mom was talking about, she if she had looked in those days, you cannot just walk into the king and, and have a meeting with him. You can lose your life for that. But if she had thought about that, but instead she thought about God, okay, I have someone who is bigger than the king. Let me go to him. And then she has the boldness to go before the king. And so this morning, let's just begin to ask God to help us to shift our faith and put it in him. A lot of times we say we have faith for actually having faith in, in, in the possibility that we're going to come out of the situation. But let's have faith in God for who He is. Let's begin to ask God to help us by His Spirit to have faith in Him. Let's ask God to be 
you are faith up in him to, to for, for who he is let's ask God to for the grace to believe the Bible says them that come to him must believe that he is and is the reward of them that diligently seek him I think we need to get the first part right let's believe that God is who he is he's the almighty God and so whatever situation we find ourselves in he is God and we can bank, we can bank on him he never fails us so let's ask God for the grace and the strength to have faith in him for who he is let's ask him to help us to look away from our situation and to look up onto him in Jesus' name we pray. If we look at the scripture a lot of times, God doesn't even want you to know all the details. So the, the part of knowing what the future holds is, is out of it. God doesn't want you to know what the future holds. He just wants you to trust them. God didn't give Abraham all the details. He didn't give him where he's going to be going. He didn't give him the ram or what. He just wants you to see if you take that step and trust them. So I think we should stop worrying about the details of what is going to happen but God says trust that I have great and mighty plans for you trust that I'll bring you through whatever you're going through and so let's just begin to ask God for the grace and his mercy to help us not to worry about the unnecessary details and just trust in his in his goodness he's the good shepherd the sheep does not worry about where the food is going to come from the sheep does not worry about who's going to protect them but the shepherd just does it they trust in the shepherd Let's ask God for the grace to add that kind of relationship to our faith in Him. Pray for the grace to trust God beyond our doubts. Just like we learned last week, the faith as small as a mustard seed, but so long as it's faith, it gets the job done. In Jesus' name we pray. I don't know if we've ever seen the, the relationship between a sheep and a shepherd. You never see a shepherd call the sheep and and they and they stop to like, are we sure this is our shepherd? Like they so much trust the shepherd to provide their food. They so much trust the shepherd to provide protection. They don't worry about that. They just follow. And that's what God wants us to do. He is the good shepherd, even better than the earthly shepherd and our earthly father. So let's just ask God one more time to help us to just trust in Him completely. To help us put our faith in Him completely. Wherever He leads, we'll follow because He has the best plans for us. He, he created us. He knows us even more than we know ourselves. So let's ask Him for the grace to put all of our trust and our faith in Him. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for another morning, Lord. Thank you, Father, for bringing us here. Thank you, Father, for your word and your promises to us, God. Father, we just ask, Lord, this morning for the grace, Lord, to trust in you for who you are, Lord. Help us to, to, to believe and hold on to what your word says about you, Lord. Help us to know you for, for your mightiness and, and for your goodness, Lord. Father, we pray, Lord, in in the past anyway we've been looking more into our situations and having our faith in our in our ability to bring ourselves out of things we ask that you forgive us and have mercy upon us lord Amen. help us to know that we have no power lord without you god help us to hold on to this victory lord which is our faith and we ask god that you take all the glory from our life lord in jesus name Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Before I go into the world of God, let's 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 take this song. Let's tell God that we believe in him. We believe in him. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. Jesus, the Son of God. I
I say you shall lend to many nations and you shall not borrow. Amen. So you can see that look, in his promise there is prosperity, there, there is blessing there. So it is not an issue for God. It's not a big deal for God to bless you. God is a blesser. Tell your neighbor, my God is a blesser. My God is, my God is a blesser. Amen. Amen. His plan is to bless you. When you, if you look at the first verse of this Deuteronomy, it said, if you diligently akin. Amen. That is the condition. Just you need to act into his word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that will also help us to that's what we're looking at today. The issue of diligence. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's look at that first verse of 28. Deuteronomy. Amen. You can see now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments. My key word is diligently. Amen. Any other version that's last one? If you fully obey the Lord your God. If you fully obey the Lord your God. Fact, that is to be diligent means to fully I mean, involved. Is it the same version? Your version. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you diligently, praise the Lord. Everybody say diligence. Amen. Amen. And we are still in our season of God's supernatural growth and increase. I speak into your family. I speak into your business. I speak into your work. That you experience the supernatural. Amen. God will Step in and you will, you will experience supernatural growth and increase Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, we want to continue with our series on faith. Faith what? Faith supplements. Amen. Did you remember to take your, su your, your supplement this morning? Yesterday? Many of us, we, we find it very difficult to do that. Do you know why it is difficult? Do you know why it is difficult? Because it requires diligence. You need to be diligent. You know? Because sometimes when you are okay, when, you are, when your health is good, you forget about multivitamins. How many of us are there? Amen. So don't Remember your multivitamins. You don't remember your, to take your vitamin C. You don't remember to take all those, you know, vitamins that help you. Amen. Because you are okay when you are bouncing. Then when you are down a little bit, you say, ah, that's taking some days. It's because we are not diligent in doing it. Amen. Amen. If you are diligent, you just make sure as you take your maybe breakfast. You get your multi vitamin by the sides, you know, and then um, you do it like that. I, I, I'm talking from experience because I know how I try to ensure that. Um, amen. Praise the Lord. I understand what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. It's not easy. That is what we want to look at today. Everybody say, keeping all diligence. Say, keeping all diligence. So we are looking at our text, our Bible passage for this series. I want us to rise up and read it. Second Peter, Second Peter, chapter one, as it's one to eleven. That's our passage for this teaching, and um, it, it's very important that we flow along. Amen. Please let's rise up as we read the Word of God. I will read one, two, go. Simon Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertains to life and godliness hmm. to the knowledge of him who calls us by glory and virtue. Verse 4. By which we have been given to us exceedingly great and precious
promises that through this you may be partaker of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through love. Verse 5. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. Verse 8. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sin. Verse 10. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Verse 11. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Father, bless the reading of your word. Amen. Let this word have impact in our life. Amen. And let us be doers of this world. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Faith supplements and we are looking at giving all diligence. Giving all diligence. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You can see that in verse 5. You can see that in verse 5. When you look at verse 1, Paul was writing to those who have obtained like precious faith. In other words, this letter is to you and I. This letter is to faith and grace people. It's to those who believe in Jesus Christ. Who have received like precious faith. Amen. Grace and peace will be multiplied to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Verse 3, very powerful. And his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to glory. He has given us all things. Oh, many of us, we, we pray, Lord, Lord, I need, I need the grace to be able to do this. That says he has given you all things. That thing you are praying for is there. Amen. That's very interesting. So when you, when the Bible says all, it did not say some things. It said all things. Oh, you want to okay? You want to you want to wake up early to pray. Lord, please help me. Lord, please. He has given you. He has given you all things pertaining to life and godliness. Oh Lord, I want to live a godly life. No, I don't want to tell lies on the telephone again. You know, I don't want. He has given you all things. Amen. It takes faith to be able to grab this thing. If you what the Bible says, all things is all things, not of some things. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And now let's look at it. Another verse 4 is also loaded. We are also given the opportunity to partake in the divine nature of God. Amen. He said, by which you have been given, have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises that. Through this, you may be partaker of the divine nature. Amen. We have the opportunity and the privilege to partake in the divine nature of God. In other words, when people see us, they can say, this person is having, you can see the nature of God in him. You can see, this is, this is Christ. You know, we can see Christ in this guy, in this woman. Amen. And verse 5. Said, but also for this very reason, for all that I've said, you know, because this letter is to us who have obtained precious faith, you know, grace is being multiplied to us. Now, God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, and we are also partaker of divine nature of God. So, for all these, for the reasons, you know, you need to do what? Give all diligence. 
giving all diligence, add to your faith. In other words, basic faith, faith alone is, is not enough. Faith alone is not enough. Just as I say, why do you take multivitamin? Does it mean what you ate is not enough? Is it, ma, is it enough? I mean, you need some supplements because no matter how it is, the, the food will not be that balanced. Amen. So they recommend for us some daily food supplements just to enhance our health, our physical health. Our, I mean, the, 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 our body health now. What about our spiritual health? That is why Apostle Peter is encouraging us that look, we must give all diligence. And the focus this morning is that diligence. Many of us, we are not diligent in our work with God because we don't know that diligence is part of it. There is nothing you can actually achieve by faith if you are not diligent. It takes diligence, Abraham's diligence to be able to do what he did. It takes his diligence. All the people that walk in faith with God, it takes diligence to be able to achieve what they did. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I think we need we, we need to really define. You know, look at the Oxford Dictionary of uh, uh, Definition of um, uh, Diligence. That is, it's careful attention. We need to make careful attention. We need to, I mean, put it in industry. In terms of acidity, or remitting application, persistent endeavor. That is what the Oxford Dictionary you know, called diligence. Persistent endeavor. That is, a diligent person is described as assiduous, industrious, conscientious, thorough, not idle, not negligent, not lazy. Amen. Praise the Lord. To be diligent means you are not a lazy person. Do you know that when God gave instruction to Abraham, he said, go and sacrifice your son, your very son whom you love. The Bible says, he got up and went around the afternoon time. Have you? Did you check your Bible? What time did he leave the house? He said, early in the morning he left. Amen. It takes a diligent person to do what? To be able to do that. And he rose up early in the morning and he began a three day journey to go and sacrifice the son in law. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Faith requires diligence. To believe God, it takes diligence. It takes no laziness cannot make faith work at all. That is why the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 11 says we should not be slothful, we should not be not lacking in diligence. Can somebody read it? Romans 12, 11. Not lacking in diligence, fervent in spirit, loving the Lord. What's your version, man? Not lacking in diligence, that is, not being lazy. Fervent in spirit. Amen. Romans 12 and um, 11. In a very simple term, diligence is careful and persistent work or effort. Diligence means you need to be persistent in what you are doing. You see, when you trust God, you trust God persistently. Every situation might be showing something contrary. Just trust in Him. It requires persistence. Amen. Yes, read your version. I use the microphone. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Never be lazy. Never be lazy. But work hard to serve the Lord enthusiastically. Work hard to serve the Lord enthusiastically. Amen. Praise the Lord. That is 
not lacking in diligence. Father and Spirit loving the Lord. So whatever we are called to do in His kingdom, we need to work out at it. Make sure you excel in it. No matter how small, make sure you excel in it. We, we remember a story of a woman of about 43 or so. Yes, non, non married. 43. This woman was so dedicated in her church. And, you know, her duty was to be cleaning the, 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 the toilet, the, the bathroom. And when she handles that, everybody will know that she's doing it. How? She'll be singing holy song, saying, praising the Lord, singing, cleaning the, the toilet, cleaning all the whole place. And some, this was a old woman of about 43 years old, not yet married. But trusting God that God will send her old partner. And they were having a program. And this woman was just singing, cleaning the toilet, and the program was going on. And somebody just came from abroad, went to use the restroom. And she, this woman was hearing it. The voice of this woman singing. And this man also has yet to marry. And he began to wonder what kind of a woman that will be singing, cleaning the toilet like this. And he made an inquiry. And to cut the long story short, today they are married. Amen. And that is God providing for her, even at her point of duty. She was doing it diligently, not saying at 43 cleaning the toilet in the church. And the God is faithful. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, God values diligence in his people. He values it so much. You know, the hand, the Bible says the hand of the diligence will rule. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24. The hand of the diligence will rule. That is the hand that is not lazy will rule. But the lazy man will be put to forced labor. Proverbs 12, 24. And all hard work brings a profit. But mere talk leads only to poverty. That is, in every labor there is profit. Amen. In every labor. You know, whatever you are doing, make sure you, you do it very well. Whatever your hands find to do, make sure you do it very well. What to read Proverbs 12, 24 this year? Work hard and become a leader. Work hard and become a leader. Be lazy and become a slave. Be mercy. Mercy. Be lazy and become a slave. Work hard and become a leader. Be lazy and become a slave. Look at all the people God used. They are very diligent people. Very, very diligent. Praise the Lord. Praise the mighty Jesus. So you can even in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 14, he says, Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for this, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. In other words, even for waiting for the coming of the Lord, being a Christian requires diligence. Being a Christian requires diligence. Sometimes some people think that being a pastor ah, is a lazy man's work. My God, try it. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. You know, in fact, if you are idle, God will not use you. God, look at all the people God called. They are doing something. They are, they are engaged. God will never pick an idle hand. Why? Because God knows that if you are faithful in that which is in your hand, you will be faithful in the big thing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The soul of a lazy man desires and asks nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. Proverbs 13, 4. Amen. The soul of a lazy man desires and asks nothing, but the soul of the diligent man shall be made rich. My prayer is that 
the Lord will quicken you. In any area of our life that we are being, I mean, we are, that, that we are being slack, God will quicken us by this word. If you are a Christian, you can't afford to be lazy. You can't afford to be lazy. Praise the Lord. You see, I, I have found out that many of us are quite diligent in this our nation, in our society. We can afford to do 10 hours, 12 hours work, 16 hours work without God. That is why all the work makes nonsense. It makes no point. The Bible says, make, making all diligence add to your faith. Then we are diligent without faith. We work 16 hours without faith. We work 10 hours without faith. It will not lead you anywhere. If you work hard, make sure you have it to your feet. Amen. Make sure it is with God. But we do everything here in this our society, in this free world, in this independent world without God. That is why many people cannot show anything for what they are doing. And I don't want our own life to be like that. He said, making all diligence add to your faith. In other words, faith plus diligence. Faith makes, you know, you need diligence to make your faith effective. Amen. May God help us in Jesus' name. When you look at the Bible, there are a lot of people who God, you know, who, who have a relationship with God and you can see the exploit they made, it takes diligence. You see, Joseph, you can see that this guy was able to stand before King because of his diligence. Is it Esther? Is it Ruth? All these are people who are persistent in their belief in God. Amen. In their work with God, they are persistent. Is it Daniel for God's sake? It takes diligence for a young guy taken as a slave in a foreign land and choose not to divide himself and Daniel, you know, stood out among the people. Do you know that Daniel was in Babylon for 70 years? He sat under about four kings in the land up to the level of the prime minister, a guy who chose to work diligently with God. From nobody to the limelight. All the other governors, they conspired against him. They, 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 I mean, they, they, they wanted to pull him down. But because he was diligent and he was acting all his diligence with God, he was able to stand up. Daniel was in Babylon for 70 years under four different kings. And he did not fail. You cannot report it. I mean, the Bible did not record anything against that name. Even the other governor said, We can't see anything against this guy. The only thing you can see, I mean, if you want him, just make sure you do make him to do something against his God. And they, they could not. They wanted him not to be able to pray to his God, but to other God. But Daniel was diligent enough to observe his hours of prayer and open his window. He did not close his window. He opened his windows towards Jerusalem and he still did what he was doing. Amen. When you believe in God, even to the point of death, you will see God waiting for you there. Amen. Do you know that Caleb and Joshua, when they came back and they said, look, the other ten were saying that, look, we believe actually that that place is beautiful. It's been, ah, no, 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 no. They will brought some of the fruit from the land. Very big. He said, but there are giants there and we cannot, we can't go there. But Caleb and Joshua, the king, they said, look, what do you mean? I said, look, if God is for, for us, these guys will be our meat. And what happened? The people around, they, they pick up stone and they wanted to stone Caleb and Joshua. Read your Bible. God showed up in the pillar of cloud. Who are you to kill a man that is on the Lord's side? Amen. When you are diligent, God is 
will show himself even more diligently to help you. Amen. Praise the Lord. You see, Paul, Paul was another man so diligent. In fact, he made it, he, he, he said, there's something he wrote in, in Colossians chapter 4, verse 12 and 13 about Epaphras. He said, I vouch for Epaphras because he exhibits diligence. He exhibits apple. When you get home, I want you to read that. Praise the Lord. What about the virtuous woman? You know, we may do read that place to see talking about virtuous, virtuous woman. But one key that is one thing that is so key about this woman is her diligence. This woman was so diligent that the Bible says she slept wolves and flushed and walked with eager and with her hands. This woman was with her hands. She wasn't a lazy woman. She gets up while it is still dark. This woman will prepare food for her own all. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She washes over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. She wasn't an idle woman. Amen. Diligence. Praise the Lord. Finally, what does it take to be diligent? Number one, hard work. Amen. It takes diligence. It, it takes hard work. What is, I mean, it, you cannot talk of diligence and being lazy. Amen. You can talk of being diligent and being lazy. It's hard work. So, Christianity doesn't encourage laziness or, or lies or doing all these gimmicks we are hearing about, you know, Christian body or churches or ministers of God. That is why there's so much, you know, disrespect for the servant of God. Once you hear, in fact, some of us, we are ashamed of calling ourselves pastors because of the way we are, we are, we are I mean, we see merchandise in the work of God. And this will not go too far. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That God has always been there, even in the days of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the days of Paul. You will see people trying to make merchandise of the gospel. It will not go too far. Amen. Amen. The church of Jesus Christ is not a place that you can make merchandise and you live long. No, 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 no. Your sin will find you out. Amen. In faith and grace church, we are not here because of dollar. Dollar is our servant. We are here to raise people who will live a righteous life. God has sent us to raise people who will live ready for the for the coming of the Lord. God has sent us to raise people who are ready for rapture. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God has sent us here to live, raise people who will live by faith. You know, walk with God by faith. Serve God by grace and live ready for the kingdom, for the coming of Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. What shall it profit a man if he gets the old world and loses his soul? Or what shall we have in exchange for our soul? Amen. I want to encourage you. Let's, let's, let's make sure that our hands are not idle. Amen. Amen. Exodus 9 8, 10 says, Whatever your hands find to do, do it with your mind. That is, whatever you do, do it to the best of your ability. What does it take to be diligent? You need to be responsible. Responsibility. Reliability. Self-discipline. Conscientiousness. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Matthew 24, it says, Blessed is that servant whom is servant when he comes. We find so deep and not caught in idleness. So Jesus expects responsibility and conscientiousness from us, every believer. He emphasizes in Luke chapter 16, verse 12. And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? And Jesus says, Who is? I mean, he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. 
And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. In other words, God expects us to be faithful in whatever is committed to our hand. Diligence requires being faithful. Yes, ma'am. Amen. To be diligent, you need to be visionary. You must have vision. And your vision must be what God has given you. And it's that vision that will continue to drive you. You must be visionary. You must have, your, your life must be goal oriented. In other words, you must be focused. We need to be focused in our lives. So, you need all this to be able to add this thing before you can begin to add any other thing to your, to your faith. Just as you need diligence to be able to take your multivitamins on a daily basis. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God demands diligence. That is why we can see in that passage in verses 5 and 10. Let's, let's read that verse 5 and 10 as we end right now of 2 Peter. He said, can we all read it together? Verse 5. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. And we also read verse 10. One to go. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue to virtue, knowledge. Amen. Let's jump to verse 10. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Verse 11. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For you to enter entirely to reign with God, you need diligence. That's what the scripture is telling us. When you are able to practice this teaching, we are just starting. I mean, it's going to take us a few weeks. You know, the Bible says if you practice this thing, you an entrance will be given to you. Another version says, if you read the book of uh, Message Translation, he said there will be a choreography trying to usher you into the kingdom of God. Amen. Just like dancers will be directing you, say, you have excelled in what your work with God. Do we have any message translation here? Can you read it, please? On the you have your, your phone or something. Amen. Message translation of that verse 11. Verse 11. Amen. This is very important. Because when you are doing a study, you should be able to know where it's going to lead you to. And this is where it's going to lead you. It's pointing you to God. It's pointing you to eternity. Do you have it? Read it for me, please. Hallelujah. So do this. Okay, verse 10 and 11. Okay, read this. So, friends, confirm God's invitation to you. Yeah. His choice of you. Yeah. Don't put it off. Don't put it off. Do it now. Right now, begin. Do this and you will have your life on a firm footing. Yes. The streets paved and the way wide open into the eternal kingdom of our Master and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. In other words, you can see it's an entrance to you, for you into that eternal home. Amen. May God help us in Jesus' name. Diligence is not a theoretical concept. It has to be practiced. He said, if you practice this, if you practice this and then trust will be given unto you. Amen. For it is for it to become an ingrained character quality, it must be practiced daily. Diligence is something you have to practice daily. In your work with God, it's a daily one, not once in a month or not once in a week or not once in a year. It's in a daily basis. Amen. And my prayers are God Almighty we, we quicken you and make you the doer of this word. Amen. And for those of us online or whoever, if you have not given your life to Jesus, all this thing, I mean, it will be very difficult for you to be diligent and add anything to your faith. You first of all need to have faith in God. Believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. 
And if you want to give your life to Jesus, I want you to just, I mean, say this prayer with me. You must be ready to surrender your life to Jesus. Say, Father Lord, I surrender my life to Jesus. I accept him as my Lord and my Savior. I believe that he died for me and he rose again. Lord Almighty, take total, take, take total control of my life. I live the rest of my life for you. In Jesus' name, I pray. And if you say that simple prayer, I'm telling you, Jesus is eagerly, you know, anxious, waiting, stretching his hand to receive you. And if you have done so, you need to join yourself in Bible believing church anywhere you are. And if you are around this location in Bishonet or in Ipsy, why not join us in faith and grace just as we continue to grow together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word that you have sent to us this morning. Lord, I pray, O oh Lord, that we plant in us afresh the spirit of diligence in the mighty name of Jesus. Our work with you, Lord Almighty, that the Lord Almighty we pray for that grace to be more diligent than before in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to grow in our faith. We want to add to our faith virtue. We want to add to virtue knowledge. We want to add to knowledge, O oh Lord, self-control. Lord, we pray that God, the grace, the, the foundation, it takes diligence to be able to do this. As we need diligence to be able to maintain, to take our multivitamins on a daily basis. Father, help us in Jesus' name. Thank you, our Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. In Jesus' name we are praying. Hallelujah. You know, it takes diligence to, to take communion on every Sunday. Amen. And this time we meet together. We need diligence. Some people will say every Sunday you are taking it. Yes, he said, Christ says, as often as you do this, you do it in remembrance of me. Amen. I want us to lift up our bread and our wine. Father, we ask that this bread, O oh Lord, which is your body, and the wine, which is your blood, be sanctified in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray, O oh Lord Almighty, that what you did on the cross of Calvary will not be in vain. Lord Almighty, we bless this bread, and we bless this wine. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's take our bread. My cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, drink me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Jesus, the promise of healing, the 
promise of protection. The promise of your blessing. The promise of, of, of your love for us. Your unfailing love. Because when you love somebody, when you love someone, no devil can touch that one. So I cover every one of us with this blood of Jesus. Because your blood is upon us, the devil cannot touch us. COVID or no COVID cannot come near our homes. I cover our homes and sprinkle this blood upon our leaders, upon our doubles in the mighty name of Jesus. We cover every member of faith and grace church home and abroad in the blood of Jesus. We cover our homes, we cover our cars, all up in the blood of Jesus. We rebuke the spirit of COVID-19. I say, no, because it's from the pit of hell, it shall not have dominion over us in the mighty name of Jesus. It will not claim any life in the mighty name of Jesus. As we go out this week, we enjoy divine security. We enjoy divine protection. We enjoy divine health. Lord Almighty, we enjoy divine provision. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. It's time for our offering. Let's, let's bring out our offering before the Lord is our uh, Amen. And quickly to remind you that there are four different ways by which you can do this your tithes and your offering to the Lord. You give it through the website. You go to our website and uh, click and give. Or you text any amount to this number 833 994 Or you can send it to our cell ID. Or you send us a check. As you give it up to the Lord, the Lord will surely turn your seed to an harvest in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to lift up our offering before the Lord Father. We lift up this seed before you. Lord Almighty, you have promised that seed time and harvest shall not cease. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray for the seed, O oh Lord, that you will turn into a great harvest for us in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for all the brethren that are sending their time to you. Father, Lord, you promise that you will repeat the devourer for them. Father, go ahead and do so in Jesus' name. The devourer will not have dominion over you. Everything you lay your hands upon will prosper. The remaining night ten, the blessing of God is upon it. It will continue to multiply. Your offering will turn to great harvest for you. And Lord, we pray that this offering be used for the expansion of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, Father, Lord Almighty, for keeping her. Thank you, Lord, for sustaining her these five years. Thank you, Lord, for her growth. Thank you, Lord, for her development. Thank you, Father, for she's growing in the Lord. Thank you, Father, Lord Almighty, for the knowledge and the wisdom you have bestowed upon her. Father, we release her into your hand, oh Lord, as she starts another calendar year. Daddy, Lord, as she continue to grow in the fear of the Lord. Amen. She will continue to grow in the grace of God. Amen. She will continue to grow in the spirit of the Lord. Amen. Lord, we continue to increase her in knowledge. Amen. In her education, she will grow well. Amen. She will excel. Amen. You grant her the spirit of excellence. Amen. Lord, I pray for her parents that everything they will need to raise her, Lord, they will not lack it. Amen. You continue to be their source. Amen. You continue to be their Jehovah Jireh. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We soak you in the blood of Jesus. You will stand out among equals. You will shine as light in the midst of darkness. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray for you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Hallelujah. Praise, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we are rounding up right now. Praise God. And the Lord bless you. Amen. And the Lord keep you. Amen. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Before we share the grace, I want to encourage you, please, all try as much as possible to join the Bible study every Thursday. Every Thursday evening, 6.30 to um, 7.30. This is very important. God bless you. Amen. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. And so sin shall not have dominion over us. For the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of us and quickens our mortal bodies to the glory of his holy name. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.